How are you doing, everybody? This is Grace and Glory. Uh, though this video should cover everything that we currently know about Falcon's turnaround tech, a, uh, it's called a bag dash. It's a combination of uh, tea bag and a back dash. So uh, this is done by starting a standing turnaround, this guy here, and then interrupting the standing turn with a crouch, and then interrupting the crouch with a forward dash. So um, crouching is the key to this entire thing because if you try to, let me turn this on, if you try to input a turnaround dash out of a standing turnaround like this, it will revert back to the beginning of the turnaround dash animation. And that just takes extra time and it's, it's just a total waste. Uh, but what happens is if you begin the standing turnaround and then you do a crouch, at any point during that, well, the crouch now locks in your forward-facing orientation as a frame one, and now you can do a forward dash out of that. So as far as we know, Falcon is the only character that really benefits from a bag dash, and that's just because his turnaround is so bad compared to his forward dash. He's the only one with this problem, so he's the only one with this solution. So uh, before I get into the execution of how to do this, uh, I do want to emphasize that it's probably, it, it may not be useful enough to be worth learning. The inputs for this are extremely strict, and you can't afford to lose very many frames before you would have ended up slower than a regular turnaround would have been. Like that. Uh, so I don't think that this is going to be the meta for Falcon, unless a better way is found of performing this. And I have so far I haven't had a whole lot of luck. Uh, but if we can find a consistent or maybe even a bufferable way to do this, then that could definitely be meta. But I want to get this information out here at this stage. So uh, here's the thing. Uh, bag dash is not actually a complete solution for the turnaround issues that Falcon has anyway. The usefulness varies a lot based on what move you're trying to avoid. So let's look at Lucina's down tilt, for example. Uh, done frame perfectly, a bag dash will only get Falcon out of the way one frame sooner than a normal turnaround dash. So a normal turnaround dash escapes with seven frames of head start. And with a bag dash, frame perfectly, six total frames, now he escapes with a bag dash. Now that's still worse than Link's normal back dash. They share the same initial dash speed Falcon and Link do. Uh, Link escapes with one, two, three, four frames of head start. But Link gets hit with three frames of head start. One, two, three, begin down tilt, and he gets hit. But comparing to Lucina's rising forward air, Link needs one frame of head start. Whereas Falcon's normal turnaround needs two frames of head start. But if you do a bag dash, then frame perfectly, Lucina is the one who needs the head start. You can give Lucina one frame of head start and then turn, crouch, dash, and all of a sudden, even Falcon can escape. Falcon can escape better than Link with this where before Falcon needed two frames of head start, but with a bag dash, Lucina took one frame head start and Falcon still escaped. That basically, roughly, translates to bag dash allowing a plus four. Numerically, it's a bit weird because this is purely with the animations, but uh, it basically allows you to escape four frames faster from high attacks, which also means that if you're just doing it manually, you have four frames of leeway, which is another way to think of it. So if you are trying to do the input, and 
and you get to this point, oh, you've wasted a frame there, oh, you've wasted a frame there, and there, you're still better off than you were just doing a regular turnaround. So the reason for this, you might have noticed, is uh, it all has to do with Falcon's forward dash animation. He actually low profiles pretty nicely with his torso. So a side-by-side -side comparison here for how the animation affects it. Here we will have one, two, three, and now Falcon begins a forward dash versus his back dash from the same position. So at the same exact time there, uh, his upper body, his torso, is much further out of the way, which will enable him to uh, escape things like, uh, like certain rising aerials or potentially falling aerials from higher up. Uh, it's pretty good, honestly, for, for that type of thing. But the problem is that it does not address the fundamental problem that Falcon has where moves will attack his leg. That's still an issue no matter which direction because his forward dash also leaves his leg behind. So basically, um, the usefulness for a back dash is very matchup dependent, individual move dependent, and uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, in a lot of cases, it's it would be useless unless you're TAS because frame perfectly, you only saved one frame for a low hit, and that's not feasible. That's not doable. Uh, consistently at a human level and that's what he really needs but this is an interesting technique to have on hand against things like oh maybe uh, I don't know maybe like Zero Suit Samus is coming in with the forward air then you can do a standing bag dash and just escape from that much better than you would have otherwise now this basically brings me to my next point. There are two types of bag dash. There's a bag dash from standing and a dashing bag dash. The standing version is probably the most important one. This can theoretically allow him to disengage after he spaces a nair on shield, for example. Or any other close quarter situation where he basically comes to a complete stop at some given point. So the most consistent way that I've found to pull off a standing bag dash is to move the control stick in a zigzag pattern. You barely, barely tilt the stick back and you immediately tap down. And as soon as you hit the bottom of the analog stick gate, you slide along the bottom until you reach the forward position. So basically what you would wanna do is you can break this into two separate halves for the sake of practice. Step one would be uh, learning the instant reverse crouch. And that's done just by barely tapping to the side and then sinking down. It's a little bit of an L motion on, this, on the stick. Not very much, just a subtle L. Then uh, from the bottom, from crouch position, you need to be able to move from here and then slide forward quickly enough to get a dash. What, the, the only thing that you need to keep in mind here is that uh, you have to be able to make the x-axis of the stick move quickly enough to register as a dash, even though you're moving along the bottom. Because if you go slowly, then you just get crouched to walk. And that actually takes a good while, uh, using this as comparison, because you crouch, and then to go straight into a walk, you actually stand up before you begin walking forward. And that takes extra time, you're going to get hit which is why just like an instant crouch walk is not helpful. So the two halves of this process are instant turnaround into crouch and then being able to dash from crouch. For me, this is the most uncomfortable part. It's just a, it's a, it's a weird thumb motion, I feel like, to generate that much speed on the upswing, but with enough practice, it's doable. Now, a bag dash out of a dash is more complex. Uh, but we actually have a way of making the timing smoother to where it's a little bit more humanly doable. After inputting a dash, roll the stick back along the top in a three-quarter motion until you reach the down position. And then from there, flick the stick forward again to get the dash. Tap jump users are basically screwed out of this option and need to time the standing version manually out of a dash. You just end up jumping. So to practice this maneuver, you're actually gonna to wanna to build up to it in three separate steps. 
Step one is really easy. You uh, just dash and then roll the stick back three notches and you end up with a standing turnaround. And if you just hold the stick in that position, you end up walking. So the diagonal forward and up inputs are not really necessary for this. They're only there to make the thumb motion doable at a human level. The diagonal back input though is important because that's what prevents you from just buffering a back dash. So honestly, this alone, this step one is already a pretty nice option. A lot of characters can actually get some good mileage out of this, um, especially good walk speed characters such as Martha or Lucina. So that's already a nice thing just to have in your pocket. Uh, now step two is also pretty easy. You do the same thing as step one, but instead of stopping here, you continue to roll the stick back until you're at the bottom back corner. So what this should get you is an instant reverse crouch out of a dash. This is terrifying. This is actually broken for characters with a crawl because that gives you options that I don't even want to think about. You can approach with your low profile and you have access to your back air. So it's actually kind of terrifying the implications for those characters. I wish that I hadn't found this almost. As soon as, as soon as I found this out, I realized I had just indirectly buffed Snake, and I almost cried. Now step three is just adding the forward dash once you're in the reverse crouch position. And again, like the standing version, this is the hardest part of the process for me. Here's how to basically troubleshoot a bag dash if you've done it wrong, based on the result that you get. You might get something that looks a bit like this. And if you get that, the little uh, the little crouch in front of them tells you that you've done the circle spin a bit too quickly. It means that you've rotated it too quickly up to here to where you didn't get this input buffered. This input buffers into this input really nicely, so you can almost treat those as the same input. But if you rotate the stick too quickly and don't get those, then it's held at the bottom position and you end up buffering a crouch in front of them. So just slow down the stick a little bit and you'll get the rhythm right more consistently. If you get this instead, then you never actually hit the down input at the right rhythm. You just, uh, you, that means that you hit the back angled input correctly, but you did not move the stick for enough, far enough down. Or you might have hit down, but then immediately try to dash out of it uh, too quickly, and you ended up just hitting and holding the stick at the side input to just continue your walk. When it's done right, this should almost be invisible. You should actually see less animation, less movement, because what you're doing is you're bypassing the part of the game that's supposed to show movement, the turnaround animation. Since you're bypassing that, it should look faster, even though technically you're um, adding some extra inputs in there. It should visually look like there's less to process. It should be invisible if it's done correctly, basically. So if you can see any parts of this animation, that tells you what part you went wrong at. If you can physically see the standing turn on animation, that's where you messed up. You didn't initiate the crouch fast enough. If you see the crouch animation start, which is probably your most likely problem that you're going to have with this, it means that you're just not tapping forward quick enough because you can't cancel out of that crouch frame one. It should be invisible when it's done perfectly. There may still be other ways to perform bag dashes. This is still new, uh, new territory. Supposedly there's a way to get it uh, more consistent using tilt stick bidu to get the uh, one frame turnaround input using the C-Stick, but I haven't really looked into that and there's a reason for it. Uh, entering the Bidu state requires some setup. And the whole point of this is that Falcon needs to be able to dash away from things immediately. So needing to require a uh, Bidu setup will actually defeat the whole purpose of why he needs this. So I haven't really looked into that too closely, but feel free to experiment that you may find something that I didn't. Pro controller users might have a hard time learning this tech since I think the Smash Octagon, uh, the GameCube controller Octagon, 
makes a huge difference in being able to get that feedback to learn what you're doing. Uh, I think this is a really demanding tech, and I don't think it's actually viable for anything below top level play. But the whole point of doing this is we can perhaps find something to develop the tech further, make it more accessible, make it more useful. Because um, I mean, right now you're you're entering the realm of TAS. It's not really viable for most players to ever worry about this. Really, it's it's kind of a parlor trick. Uh, until it gets improved. So that's basically where we're at with this. It has uses, it has practical applications, kind of, only against maybe some high hits, but if that's all you're learning it for, I don't actually think that it's worth the cost of entry of learning how to do it. So if we can find something better than this, the same way uh, we found an improvement to a Tokyo Drift that made that bufferable, then you know, we might be onto something. But until then, this is more informational. It's it's a novelty trick. It's it's something, but it's not something. You know what I mean? Or, you know, they could just fix Falcon's dash and not require a super special input just to get a dash that's a little bit better than Ganon's. Because that's really what we're getting out of this. Until then, this is pretty much what we have to work with. So hopefully we can find some way to make this better, more reliable, more consistent. And until then, we just got to work with what we got. Perfect.